This is a private number. Yeah, I know. This is Lucia Purnell, isn't it? Yeah, I'm Purnell. Who are you? My name's Murphy. I'm a PI, and I'm investigating a case you covered in the Bay City Mirror. The Black Arrow Killer? Yeah? So are a thousand other people. What makes you so special? I've got a note that might be from the Black Arrow Killer. Okay. Let's meet. I can tell you whether it's the real thing or not. I live in the old city on Chandler Avenue. There's a diner close by called the Brew and Stew. Let's meet there. I know the place. I'll be there in 15 minutes. By the way, what did you say your name was? Tex Murphy. That's T-E-X. I got it. Well, I hope I didn't take you away from anything important. Nah, just a fight with my editor. Can't even remember what we argued about. Well, don't worry, because I'm not here to start a fight. The truth is, I piss people off, usually the wrong people. Well, at least we got that in common. Good. Now, you said you had a note? Yeah. Oh. Where'd you get this? I got it from a client. Your client's in danger, Murphy. How much do you know about the Black Arrow Killer? Killed a few people in the Southwest a couple of years ago, and then a girl around here got killed recently. You know, Malden might know more than he's letting on. Then again, he might not. Of course, if he did, I doubt he'd tell you he's not that stupid. I'm not so sure about that. Look, why don't you fill me in on a few details, and then I can be certain. It's a long story. Come on over to the booth and hear me. You're slightly above average, aren't you? Yeah, in many things. Well, we'll just have to cut you down to size, won't we? When the first bodies turned up in Arizona in the summer of 41, the local police tried to keep the story off the wires. They didn't want the bad publicity. It wasn't until March of 42, when three other victims were found, that the story really broke big. Turned out the killer in all five cases had the same M.O. He sent notes to his victims before murdering them. I had a chance to see one of those notes. It was exactly like this one. Had the black arrow? All that. Right, and the block lettering, same words, everything. You probably know cases like this can spawn copycat murders. For that reason, the police didn't release copies of the notes to the media. Well, so they could differentiate between the copycat killer and the real killer. Exactly. Anyway, the Black Arrow killer racked up two more victims in Nevada before the police finally caught up with him. At that point, the FBI moved in and media coverage evaporated. The name of the guy they arrested was Leroy Kettler. The night they booked him, he hung himself in his cell with a shoelace. Funny thing is, he was wearing cowboy boots. Now that's a little hard to explain. After things cooled off, I went down there and interviewed a few people, including an inmate who told me that two men in suits went to Kettler's cell the night before he hung himself. I'm pretty sure they were NSA. NSA? <laughs> What would the National Surveillance Agency be doing messing around with a serial killing case? More than that, why would they kill Kettler? Maybe he was a fall guy. Or maybe Kettler really was the serial killer and the feds just didn't want the case resolved. Regardless, there was a cover-up. Mike Malden said there was another case around here. How does that tie in? 
It doesn't. The girl was a grad student at San Francisco Tech. There was no indication that she was receiving threatening notes, and there was nothing out of the ordinary before she was murdered. Oddly enough, the police found a note in her room. At that point, the feds moved in and took over. That girl, what was her name? Collins. Sandra Collins. You know something I ought to know? I'm not sure. Now there's no chance that you can give me the name of your client. You know I can't do that. But I'll tell you what, if I find out who's stalking my client, you're gonna get a scoop out of this. That's a fair deal. <sighs> By the way, have you heard of a place called Autotech? Don't think so. Might be worth checking into. Oh, and Murphy, one more thing. When I was following this story in Nevada, I met a guy just like you, a PI. He asked a lot of questions, too. A week later, he had a tag on his toe. Suicide, I think. Brunel certainly gave me a lot to think about. What's the common denominator between Fitzpatrick, Malloy, Kettler, and this young woman, Sandra Collins? Too few details, too many implications. The bottom line is, whoever sent the note to Emily's for real, and she's in danger. Brunel mentioned a place called Autotech. Maybe that's a place to start. Somebody just jumped off the water tower on the roof of Rusty's fun house. Dressed all in black. Maybe Emily wasn't just imagining that someone was watching her. 